Plot details are coming out for the new Ahsoka show, but fans are already trying to cancel her? Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor, and yes, we got details on the new series starring Rosario Dawson. However, fans online are still trying to wrongfully cancel her for a case that actually has already been dismissed. Uh, let's go through it all so you guys have all the facts. Uh, yes, there's more details about this, but I want to remind you before we even get to those details, who told you first, guys? Yes, I did over when I was writing for Phantom Wire. Always still happy to partner up with these guys uh, when I told you guys... Exclusive. That uh, Rosario Dawson, well, Ahsoka Tana would come back and that we were assuming it was going to be Rosario Dawson was the, was the talk around town, uh, along with bo we, we We called all this uh, 11 months ago, uh, and now it's all happening uh, as we predicted. So, uh, yes, there is more details coming out. I can confirm a lot of this actually is uh, is true. Uh, Ahsoka Tano is on the hunt for evil Grand Admiral Thrawn. We admitted this at the end of the show, too, uh, in the hope that it will help her locate the missing Ezra Bridger, the young Jedi that disappeared with Thrawn many years ago. Based on the characters from Star Wars franchise, a spinoff of the TV series The Mandalorian. It's actually a spinoff of Rebels as well. Whether it's connected or not is still unclear. It does sound like Dave Filoni wants to do his own thing and his own timeline. He sort of made it clear that, hey, the, the time may not be the same as you think from Rebels to Mandalorian, etc. We could adjust things if we want to. Uh, I've also heard my own sources, reliable sources tell me Filoni wants to change the sequel trilogy. Anything he can do to fix the timeline and adjust so they do their own path moving forward instead of having to rely on what the sequel trilogy told them to do. Uh, he's very much a fan of trying to figure out how to do that. So it's still unclear what the connection to Rebels will be, but yes, it will be a, pretty much a Rebels live action series. Ezra, Thrawn, etc. all involved in this uh, series. So uh, there's also apparently some new casting information that came in. This comes from Daniel RPK. He, he does sometimes get some things accurate. Absolutely. Sometimes he's a little off, but um, they talk about two new characters, uh, Boca and Morai. Uh, as well as calls for extras. But Boca is described as a very strong-minded independent, as well as a natural leader, boyish-looking Middle Eastern, African Pacific and Islander, black African American, mixed ethnicity, uh, West Indies and Caribbean actor between the ages of 20 and 35 are being sought for the role. And then Morai is described as a very vital unreliable male character who is simultaneously complex and shady. Sounds fun. There's no specific race or ethnicity listed, but actor uh, should be between the age 40 to 60. Uh, it would be more ideal. So there you go. Uh, looking to shoot at some point this year, which means at the earliest we could see the series drop next year, uh, which is a good sign. Um, and then Kathleen Kennedy has said that it's in active development. Uh, so there you go. Also, uh, Mina Massad, who played the live-action Aladdin, is out there gunning for the part. He's out there on Instagram trying to make it happen because he heard the fan speculation i know he actually was out there saying he couldn't get a role since aladdin so for him to score this and jump into the star wars universe would be big for him and honestly i liked him in aladdin I, I wouldn't mind seeing him in some other work uh so good for him uh so there you go so that's the details now but what's this mean what's actually happening well uh apparently fans don't want it it's a lot of fan well these aren't really the fans am i if you ask me these are the idiots idiots who just believe what they're told via tweets on twitter the worst kind of people online. Uh, exactly. As the neighbor trade play, a, a phobe getting into the family. Is, I don't want to live in a, a live, I don't want a live action rebel content because they cast a phobe as Ahsoka, made her look effing terrible and accurate. And beyond that, this isn't Ahsoka's story. She was in the show for a season plus some extra episodes. That's it. Finding Ezra Sabine's journey. So peed that I could have had Ahsoka and uh, Ezra again, but they had to have a violent phobe play my girl. Vengeful. I want it to come out, but I don't want it played by someone who isn't a phobe. Is it then that trans? Come on, this is it's just nonstop. Funny, I thought a live action Osaka is nice when the actress isn't a. Uh, just it goes on and on and on. You can get multiple threads here as you go find it. I guess they didn't have a care of it. Is a phobe, right? One person, finally, one person who's out there telling you what I'm about to tell you. Uh, raging phobe, beat up people, and blah 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 blah. But sure, she's amazing if you say so. Uh, it's just so terrifying how this stuff just gets out of hand. So what is the facts here? What is the facts? This is a Vanity Fair article she did uh, earlier this year, or I guess it was la last year, uh, and she talks about this controversy. And, and it's important that we get out this as widely as possible so idiots out there have the truth instead of their truth or what they think is the truth or oh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so uh, 
Rosario has asked this question. There's a concern in fandom about a lawsuit that was fired against you last year uh, from, from a longtime family friend. The claim accused you and other family members of anti-bias and called you, uh, and you've called the lawsuit false and baseless. What would you say to those Star Wars fans who hear this and believe the worst, that you are phobic? Uh, well, firstly, I just want to say I understand that and why people were concerned uh, and are concerned. I would be, too, if I heard some of those claims. But, I mean, as we're seeing right now in these past months and just recently, actually, the truth is coming out. Every single claim of discrimination has been dismissed by the person who made them. And as you said, the fact that this is coming from someone I've known since I was a teenager for the better part of my life and who my family was trying to help, as we have many times in the past, it really just makes me sad. But I still have a great empathy for him. Court records show 18 of the 20 claims were withdrawn voluntarily without a settlement, which is telling. I uh, means they couldn't get any money. means there was nothing. They, just, they didn't do it. Plus, the lawyer left the case. Two counts remain, alleging a, a physical thing, and a judge will rule on whether they, they can move forward next month about this altercation. Uh, but there are people that would say, well, this is just another example of a wealthy, famous person overpowering the system. Uh, so what would you say to those people who are unconvinced both about this case and about what you actually believe about this community. Uh, the reason that all this discrimination claims were dropped is because they didn't happen. I was raised in a very inclusive and loving way, and that's how I've lived my entire life. I've always used my voice to fight for or lift up and empower the LBGTQA community and use my platform to channel voices and fiction and nonfiction work that I've produced and directed. So I feel the record is very clear. Uh, so there you go. I mean, look, there's an accusation from some family friend who clearly withdrew. Uh, you, I guess you could say she's famous and has money, and that's why. I don't know. If there was evidence of it, you'd think they wouldn't have just pulled out. If this was a real thing, they weren't just going for a quick buck or a settlement. They would just, of course, push through. Why wouldn't they stop? Some lawyer would see that there's merit to the case and stick around and want to get money from the rich Hollywood type, right, if it actually happened. However, if the lawyer left and they couldn't get a settlement... That's that's odd to me. Now, if, if there had been a settlement, then one could argue, oh, well, she paid him off. Okay, then maybe I'd buy that. But without a settlement, out of 18 of the 20 claims that were all of the discrimination, well, then to me, that's gone. There's no there's no case anymore. This person is clearly not even saying anymore because they've withdrawn the, withdrawn the complaint. So what are we still talking about? The two that remain are an altercation. I think it's her mom with this person. So they got in an altercation, again, None of my business. What, what happened? What, I don't know. It sounds like a personal family issue happened. There was, I don't know, maybe there was shoving to get out of a home. Whatever the case would be, the issue of is she phobic to me has been dropped, settled, and it's over. So to see these people still out there, still spreading this lie because they are better and they know better. And ah, 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 it sickens me. You, you, yes, you people, I, I, you sicken me. You don't even get your facts straight. You just believe what you're told and will ruin someone's life and then put it out there. It's terrific what these people are doing. Uh, and we, I want to make sure I always shine a spotlight on stories like this so the truth can be out there. Uh, now, it, it, look, Rosario Dawson like, seems like such a nicest person. Always out there for good causes. I just don't buy it. Sometimes I do. I'll, 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 I'm not going to touch this story because maybe, uh, you know, there's a few people who have, I, who have been canceled who I have not made stories about because I'm like, I want to hear a little bit more about this case before I go and defend them or seemingly look like I'm defending them. Uh, Joss Whedon, I'm not trying to defend him. Uh, but at the same time, being an a-hole is different from being ist and other things. That, that, it's, it's important that we at least clarify that one's a big one. But uh, in this case, I don't see anything aside from this court case that's now been dismissed. So what are we still talking about? Why is Twitter still trying to ruin her? Uh, you go through all these, it's, it's, it's horrifying. So uh, that's the truth. So keep that to, in, your, in your pocket as you see or you go around social media. Make sure you keep it. I want to plug something really quick before we go. Uh, just dropped the new episode of Hugging the Cactus. Speaking about making sure the truth comes out, the Justice for Johnny one is important to me, and we talk about why in this latest episode over on Hugging the Cactus. My Keep Going podcast, uh, we delve into it. I had an amazing guest, Les, over from uh, Spiritually uh, Empowering uh, Coaching. It's a wonderful channel. She does a lot of life advice and stuff and uh she talks about her own experience of being a toxic relationship and we talk about why how to avoid people like 
her, A-H, uh, lots more. So I'm going to put that video at the end of this. If you can go click over and show that some support, if you got some time, I'd be grateful for your support as we build up Hugging the Cactus and the Keep Going podcast. I want to tell more good stories over there, spread some positivity, and make sure we get good mental health going over there. Uh, so please support Hugging the Cactus if you can. If you haven't already subscribed here, hit that subscribe button for me real quick. Smash that bell. And while you're at it, smash the like button and leave a comment down below. What do you think of this? Do you believe the story? Uh, do you not believe Rosario? Let me know. And uh, right here, you can click on Cactus. The video will be right there in the bottom left or you can click the one on the right we're also live tonight 9 p.m eastern center time every tuesday thursday here on popcorn planet